And one of the other things that we missed was this complex list, this media list. Mm -hmm. Every year, this is the second annual complex media list. You actually mentioned Jordan Rose. Jordan was yes. a major, major uh, contributor mm -hmm. to this list. Mm -hmm. And he cannot be, obviously, conflict of interest. He's not allowed to be like on the list. But if he was allowed to be on the list, if complex people were allowed to be on it, he would have been top 15. Should be up oh, 100%. 100%. And He's I think killing it right now. A lot of people at complex would have been on this list. I know Speedy, Speedy yeah. he wasn't on the list as well. Oh, yeah, I know yeah, yeah. B. Dot, he wasn't mentioned on the list. I know he had um, a show with Complex. I don't know if brackets. he's still there. I haven't seen but, brackets. Um, yeah, yeah. I know there are some people that were excluded from the list because they were Complex affiliates, employees, right. whatever the case may be. Um, those two in particular, they stand out. Um, Speedy, he was mentioned a few times. Oh, also, I want to start out by saying shout out to Charlemagne too. Char uh, Charlemagne, oh, yeah. he kind of gave us a, a nice look on the Brilliant Idiots podcast. He Salute thought Charlie, yeah. if there were a more up-to-date list, a little bit more current list, that the folks on the Needs to Know podcast will be on there. So, yeah. uh, with that type of acknowledgement, definitely want to shout out to him. But, real quick though, do we agree with him saying that the OGs, like the Sways, the Angie Martinez, uh, the Big Boy in the Morning, should they not be included in this? Yeah. Aren't they still in a race? Or Alex, yeah. you work at Sirius XM yeah. very closely in the hip-hop music section. Mm -hmm. So, before I answer, I would like to hear... Your answer. Oh this, oh, this guy getting good with that podcast <laughs> and shit. Um, I see both sides. I don't know if I necessarily have an answer, though. The first side that I do see is that, yeah, a lot of these people are well off at home already, for sure. And I know a lot of these people are not looking to be uh, number one, number two, especially when they've done so much. I'm not saying everybody, but most people. So mm -hmm. I can understand the need for that. Um on the other side of it, it's like, yeah, it could probably take away from some people maybe not getting the spotlight or shine when they've actually shown up. So I'm I'm pretty split on it. I gotta be honest with you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, if if there were if all of the OGs really cared about it, then sorry, yeah, group them. It'd be a landslide every year. It, like, and it would be a landslide every year, absolutely, yeah. But I do like the list because it's current. Like, mm -hmm. have you what have you done this year to kind of stand out? So that I agree with. Mm -hmm, kind mm -hmm, of. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was centered around the, the Kendrick Drake beef. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it was. A lot of people, uh, in particular Charlamagne, he had a problem with DJ Head not being on the list. Yeah, because if I it was that was an issue too. If it was centered on the Me beef, too. then he should have been top five. Absolutely, no question. DJ Head was literally, if, if it was academics on the Drake side of social media, mm -hmm. it was Head for West Coast mm -hmm. and that whole thing. So, you know, to their um, yeah, parameters, but, he definitely met it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but on the... Mm. On the media front, mm. I think I, f I feel like Head kind of not came out of nowhere because obviously he's known, but mm. in terms of speaking about it, I feel like his voice was kind of not as loud as Axe. No way. I, 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 disagree. I mean, disagree. 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 He was like academics the, is bigger. He was the yeah. voice on the yeah, on behalf of LA for West Coast for sure. For sure. For like, sure. No, I, I I agree with that. I'm just yeah. saying his his voice wasn't as loud as Axe. No, of course not. But yeah. that's why Axe is number one, right? Yeah, his yeah. voice wasn't as loud, yeah. but his impact was. Yeah, his impact was there. And sure. this a, a list like this, when you talk about power rankings, like even and and Pia, you work in the NFL, you work closely yeah. to sports. Power rankings are not necessarily who has the best record. Exactly. True. Power rankings are current. who's having the most impact, mm -hmm. the uh -huh. trajectory. Like a power ranking is: Are you what is what are you doing today, mm -hmm. and what is your potential in the future? For Absolutely. Sure. Right. Um, and for somebody like a DJ Head, he definitely should have been on this list. And again, I don't want to discredit Jordan or no, anybody no. over at Complex. But Head should have been there. Head also had the DJ set. He should have. At no, the pop-up concert. That's yeah. unanimous. That's like... And, like, that is a unanimous yeah, that's decision. History. He's yeah. got a new show with Sirius. They, yeah, yeah. They dropped the ball on that, yeah. um, not including Head. But there was a little bit of controversy from um, Elliot Wilson. I don't know if y'all want to kind of go into each and every person <laughs> on this Elliot, list, you know. but there are a few people I I do want to highlight, right? I don't think we go into like each and every person. Isn't it long? The it is. It's 25 yeah, people, yeah, yeah. but yeah. there's a few names that I would like to highlight. Mm -hmm. The first being at 25, Gabe. Gabe P. Yo. Shout out to Gabe. Oh, I didn't know he was 25. I thought yep. it was higher. No, he, he, he was 25, yeah. and I feel like he should have been higher. Gabe wasn't even on the list last year, which was a mistake, but yeah. 25 is dope. I'm glad y'all, you know, including him. Gabe should absolutely be higher. For he sure. Has, He's been putting a lot of people on. Bro, he has the go-to freestyle spot. That's mm -hmm. like back in the basement on BT. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
for me, big ticket shit. Tigger. The big ticket shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that is that is this generation's that where artists know if I go up there, it's gonna do something. It's gonna yeah. do something. Like Big Sean, yeah. his freestyle made so many waves, and that was on Absolutely. on the radar. Yeah. So. Drake, Central C, and Come on. I, I Spice. I did. Yeah, she no. had a debut on there yeah, before sure. she popped. Yeah. Absolutely, he for sure. Been higher. So at 25 was uh, Gay P. Again, I'm not going in chronological order. I just want to highlight a few Some names people. and then oh, yeah. we can kind of like give commentary there. At number 17 mm-hmm. was Angela Yee. Yes. Last year, she was 14. I think, personally, her absence on The Breakfast Club, for has been, me, has been felt. has been so missed. Mm. And just for that fact alone, mm. 17 is too low. Yeah, she showed she showed what she brings. Hey, she sure. showed yeah. what she brings with her absent and also the content that she's bringing with Mano on um, Way service. Up With Ye. Way she even brings B Dot. She also has exactly. She yeah. also has um, lip service with Ye. Absolutely. I think she should be a little bit higher. If not, right? Like if we're talking about legacy acts because we do got the Sways and we do got the Angie Martinez's and the Big Boys. We're talking about legacy acts. I understand that. Yes, she may be a current name, but. Her, Charlemagne, DJ Envy, they are in the fucking Hall of Fame. Oh, no, they and are. There is yeah, a legacy. Sure. Yes, Angela, right? yeah. And if we're going based on that, I think ye should be a little bit higher because me personally, I miss her on a breakfast club. And shout out to Just Hilarious. She's like, needed on a breakfast club. Just Hilarious, club. I've, I've seen her growth, right? I know she's also, she's carrying it. You saw it? I mean, she's also carrying a child right can, now. Can I get your glasses? <laughs> you can't see through these. But no, I, I, I'm all jokes aside. First time I, I told you how I'm like, bro, what's going on? Is she reading this correct? She's too. I listen every day though. She's to a point right now where she's like better. She's getting very sharp. All right, all right. She's getting oh, very she sharp. Put, she was given a tough hand. Yes, and like she's a legendary a tough, role. Yeah. And coming from being a comedian to an on-air radio talent, like it sounds like it should be a a, a seamless transition. No, it's completely different. But it's very different. Understanding the cues, how breaks work, how to speak, when not to speak, curse words, etc. But to your Angela Yee point. Yes, Angela Yee deserves all the flowers in the world. Yeah, I also keep up with Way Up with Yee. That's not just yeah. because I'm in radio, mm-hmm. but it's because I actually enjoy what she's added to the nationally syndicated space. I was going to ask about, like, it was, uh, I was going to ask, do you miss her, Save One, because, uh, because you feel her absence from The Breakfast Club or because what she's doing now, what she transitioned to, is kind of better? Is, and Alex and then Reggie, same thing. Yeah, no, it's just one of those things for me where you kind of just take things and people for granted. And I think she was really phenomenal at her yeah, job. I took her for granted, yo. Yeah, we just took her for granted being on The Breakfast Club, yeah, being able to granted, manage yo. the personalities of a DJ MV, of a Charlemagne. And also, she had relationships in this business. Like, to Alex's point, Jess Hilarious is a comedian, yeah. right? So her field is a little bit different than somebody like an Angela Yee who grew up on Shade 45, who yeah. grew up in radio, who has these relationships and these connections with some of the people who are appearing on your show, right? There's a history there. So with that history comes a built-in rapport, which you can't duplicate, right? Mm-hmm. You, you, can't, you, you can't replicate that. Like Angela Yee knowing some of these artists and being a music, hip-hop, personality, media, journal, whatever she's labeled, like that's invaluable. And I feel like as an audience, we kind of took that for granted. And again, yeah. like you said, shout out to Jess Hilarious. I'm not trying to knock nobody. I do think there's room for improvement, but I think a lot of people on their job, they have room for improvement, yeah. right? Yeah. Like she's also pregnant, so I'm going to give her that benefit of the doubt. But I think she does need to improve in this particular role because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a radio, a broadcaster, this is not podcasting right radio is not podcasting so when i listen to the radio as somebody who has grown up in the era of radio i expect to hear a certain level of refineness Mm -hmm. not that you have to be super professional but there's a certain but even that comes with the amount of hours right it it does which is why i'm gonna give it a little bit of grace yeah yeah after you have a baby maybe it's a little bit different right but for right now like there's still tbd for me the jury is still out on her in, in, in that phase. Mm-hmm. But again, it just made me realize the importance of Angela Yee. And it speaks to Yee's professionalism. I think that's one thing that doesn't get talked about enough. She's able to show up no matter the person, no matter the task, the job. And I remember y'all out there saying way up with Yee would fail. It hasn't. Oh, no. yeah, it's hot. It hasn't. Yeah, I don't think and I don't think and she hot. has this slot, I think she has like right the, after Right breakfast after club. Breakfast Club. Oh, yeah. shit. So to mm-hmm. take that spot mm-hmm. and still show up on the dolo, very impressive. Shout out to yeah. her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she was at number 17. She was at 14 last year. She's at 17 this year. Um, some of the other notable names, we don't have to stick on. Nori, he's at 11. He was in the top five last year. He's Got at 11. I don't know if he deserves to be at 11, but I don't know what he's done in the last year. So I respect it. 
I don't think anybody knows what's going on with the drink chant business. I think people have maybe seen a little decline in the type of guests that they're getting. Mm -hmm. So most people are just going to say, oh, maybe they're not, you know, the, the list is running dry. The well is running dry. When in actuality, you can interview anyone however many times you want, so long as it's impactful. Yeah. Uh, I, could, I could see him at 11. I just caught some of the DJ Quick uh, one he just did. One thing that Nori's always going to do, he's going to show up for legends in our, in our place. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. But I also think to Nori's point, and like you said, the business, I'm glad you said the word business. Yeah. Because the business of Drink Champs for me, I've, I've been, I literally watched the very first episode of Drink Champs. Like I have been there from the beginning. What was the first episode again? It, I, I don't know, but it was in a dusty basement somewhere. No. Oh, damn. <laughs> really? just, the, qual the sound quality really wasn't good, and they were really getting drunk and really giving nah, it yeah. up in a real way. That's when Diddy the was first... calling Fat Daddy. That was even oh, before yeah. that. Oh, I yeah. was there when DMX was on there giving oh, it up. Yeah. And fit, like, damn. I was within the, like, I, I've really followed Drink Champs, and I'm glad you said business because I think the business of Drink Champs is why they haven't been as magnified. Right. Because every time I see Drink Champs as a podcast consumer, they're with another brand. They're attached to Mass Appeal. They're attached to Revolt. Revolt. iHeart. I they're attached to Revolt. They're attached to CBS. They've had so <laughs> yeah. many fucking different deals and they're handing everything. And I get it. Nori, go get, get your, your bag. I, yeah. Go get your go bag. Ahead, nigga. But I think the business of it can also affect the impact of it. Sure. Which is why I think he took a step back to 11. Got you. I get can it? see that. Not cool. Bad, so man. 11 was Nori. And then we got the top 10. And again, we can kind of speed through the top 10 because I know this is last week's news. But top 10, Alex's VP. We got Nardwar. My man. I don't know how he got top 10. <laughs> my man. But he got top 10. I'm not going to question wait, it because I'm not wait. as informed. My man. I feel like, didn't last year, didn't you kind of also give this energy? Like, what? Like, Nardwar is, he's, eh, he's all right. Top 10? I remember Savon saying something like this as Along well. And then Norway, I was yeah, like, yeah. Savon, are you not aware that he's like <laughs> literally the GOAT? Because I think Norwell was in the 20s last year. But I'm not yeah. going off of your catalog. You're going off of what you did this year. This year? I'm Got going you. based off what you did in the last and 365 days. Yeah, and off the guidelines. Top 10 and not having DJ Head? Yeah, nah. I can't stand yeah, that Yeah, the DJ Head thing was definitely a blunder. That's my VP, Crazy, but yeah. I can't put him at 10. All right. <laughs> Norwell, top 10. <laughs> Uh, he was at number 10 last year. He was at 22. Right, he was in the 20s. Yeah, I remember that. Number nine was Gillian Wallow. Okay. I'm not mad. As long as they're top okay. 10, I'm not mad. I do think they're top 10, but I think they kind of fluctuate. Again, going back to the word business, business I yeah. don't know their business, but it feels like they're in limbo somewhere in whatever they're doing now, podcast-wise, and it, not culturally-wise, no, 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 podcast-wise, it's not connecting. And it looks like they're adding shows. Yeah, they're doing like side quests. They're doing side quests, like yeah. Gillian Wallow do this and that, mm -hmm. where it's completely separate, which is I think is actually kind of good for them because for sure. it doesn't make them solely dependent on a guest or a celebrity. Yeah. It does feel a little bit low, though. I will be honest. Feels uh, a little low? Yeah. I got to hear the rest of the names. <laughs> Number eight, Anthony Fantano. Really? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I gotta ask y'all in the room. Isn't how seriously the, isn't how, he the needle drop? Yes, how he is. What's the needle drop? What's that? That's his platform. Like he reviews oh, music. That's he what infamously we're... gave my beautiful dark twist of fantasy a really low grade, and people hated him for that. How seriously do you guys take his reviews? I don't listen to him. I don't. Okay. I don't. Honestly, I, this I is, don't know. <laughs> I should not say this yeah. as a journalist, but honestly, <laughs> I don't really value people's music reviews. Like I don't really. Yeah. I know there are professional critics. I, I, res <laughs> I respect it, but like I just their opinion does not really weigh that heavy on me. Like if somebody hated an album, I'm like, okay, that's cool. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. So like, I never was really like a big needle drop music review guy. Yeah. I mean, I, I know he has a ton of like shock value to him, I guess, or maybe the way he speaks. He doesn't I'm have not a lot of familiar, like so controversial opinions. Okay. He, okay. All right. They have him at eight. You said he was at number eight. Number seven, we got Ebro. Nah, I got to put Gillian Wallow above them, though. But you're right. You say uh, Ebro. Yeah, you're right. Ebro at seven? Ebro at seven. Last year, he was 13. He cracked the top 10. He's at number seven. Okay. Um, he has, obviously, Ebro in the morning. That's you know. a New York City staple, Hot 97 staple. Shit. He also has the Ebro show and Rap Life. I know he's he has On some Apple. position over at Apple, mm -hmm. working with uh, Neg uh, Nadeska and Loki. Mm -hmm. So he's doing his thing over there. I like that But show. number seven... I'm not going to say it's too high. I'm not going to say it's too low. Again, it maybe it's right. my New York bias. I, I know Ebro. I see Ebro because I'm in New York. Yeah. And I think Ebro does a, a phenomenal job at, at what he does and owning who he is. I don't think he tries to play the young man's game. I think he's comfortable in his skin and That's he wears that. That's a great point. 
And yeah. number seven is 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 a good place. I'm not for mad me. to that. I'm not, not mad, mad at that. Even his tweets kind of get traction. His yeah. his, his tweets he, surrounding music and things of that nature. They he doesn't do things for clicks, and I I I can appreciate that about Ebro. I truly can. Uh, number six was DJ Vlad. Jesus. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, man. This one was this one was tricky for me. This one was tricky for me. Nah, yeah, this one was tricky. <laughs> I will say, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, y'all. me knowing the editorial side of it and how these meetings usually go, right. I could tell. Well, I'm I'm not gonna assume. I don't work for Complex, but these meetings with these lists, they're like the hardest thing to agree on. I, agree. I will say it's actually like crazy the process what goes behind this so i don't know if all the people that were behind this list agreed with this decision and a lot of the decisions just wanted to put that context out there i will say this though helping to serve tupac's murder is up there yeah i'm not even gonna sit here and lie to you like i i, I definitely solve. yeah help solve like he had the dude that's locked up now yeah. i'm getting the dude's name uh kvd kvd thank yeah. you and he also had other other associates of the situation on um, I guess where it got a little bit tricky for me is that he has a plethora of different personalities and celebrities that he brings on. It's not solely just to hip hop, rap, or, or that culture. Mm -hmm. like I've seen mafia bosses up there talk, you know what I'm saying? And maybe I need to do more of a deep dive on what he did this year mm -hmm. in terms of hip hop. But I, I'm not mad at him being in the top 10. Top six, uh, it's tough. I'm going to give DJ Vlad personally top five. Really? Top I mean, five. Because I'm, I'm not mad at it. I'm trying to understand. Person, it. I'm I'm gonna give him top five. <laughs> I thought you're gonna go opposite. Well, based on their criteria, I don't know how much he really covered the Drake and Kendrick. That's shit, what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Based on that criteria, but in the landscape of media and hip hop journalism, hip hop media, hip hop content, Vlad drops some form of hip hop content. Pretty more than probably anybody on this list. 